Tomb Raider was for many, the series that changed the gaming industry forever by setting up the blueprint of how action-adventure games should be made. It is the series with some of the most loved, but also with some of the most hated video games ever. That's what happens when you're passionate about a gaming franchise that is around for more than 25 years. Everyone has their own favorite games, and your opinion might be different from mine, so after playing all the mainline Tomb Raider games, I decided to show you the Bartoli's Ultimate Tomb Raider tier list. Starting off with the game that turned Lara Croft into a PlayStation icon, Tomb Raider 1 is a masterpiece that mixes platforming, puzzle solving and action into one. While in my opinion it's not the best game in the series, it's an entry that holds up just well today as it did back then, with a good antagonist, good puzzles and some breathtaking locations that you never thought it was possible in the 1996 video game. Very much like Metacritic, I placed Tomb Raider 1 in the tier A and if you haven't tried the game yet, I would say that the best official version of this game is the Steam version, but I recommend playing it on the online software called OpenLara. I also recommend hitting that subscribe button so you can help Bartoli reach his goal of a thousand subs by the end of the summer. If you're watching without subscribing, just be aware that the Fiam and Era might hunt you forever. Moving on, Tomb Raider 2 was my first and it's probably my favorite Tomb Raider game of all time. It introduced bigger and better puzzles, vehicles, improved controls and action sequences against human opponents. It was criticized for being more challenging, but I wasn't necessarily seen as a bad thing by all, including me. The music is as great as the first entry, if not better, and the best way to play this game is again on Steam and it has a meta score of 8.5 out of 10. Tomb Raider 2 in my opinion deserves to be on the S tier. While as not beloved as the first two Tomb Raider games in the series, Tomb Raider 3 is a solid prequel that made everything bigger than ever before. However, this did came with the loss of most of the mystery and suspense found in the prior entries and while it introduced new gameplay elements such as sprinting and ducking, the severe lack of innovation caused Tomb Raider 3 to feel more like an expensive pack to the second game rather than the big budget sequel. Despite these criticisms, Tomb Raider 3 is a highly enjoyable classic entry in the series and one that is a must play for Tomb Raider fans. The best way to play Tomb Raider 3 is the Steam version and it has a meta score of 7.6 out of 10 and I place it on tier B. Tomb Raider 4 was considered by many one of the weakest entries on the series, but I respectfully disagree. Yes, the series has gone stale, yes, the developers wanted to kill Lara, and yes, the gameplay is pretty much the same as the previous title, with a couple of new features, but Tomb Raider 4 is the first game in the series that actually gives you a little bit of character development by showing you Lara's backstory as you start the game with the flashback to a teenage Lara Croft in 1984. This time Tomb Raider 4 is set in Egypt and the story is actually really interesting. The only downfall of this game in my opinion is that the backtracking can make the game really difficult but if you love a good challenge this will not be a problem to you. Tomb Raider 4 can be played on Steam these days and have a meta score of 7.9 out of 10 with me placing it on my B tier just in front of Tomb Raider 3. With Lara Croft apparently killed at the end of the Revelations, the following game was a collection of stories from various points of Lara's career. By this point the engine was tired, Lara Croft was tired, the control scheme was tired and the level design was tired. Not exactly a recipe for success, plus the weak story didn't help. While this isn't particularly an awful Tomb Raider game, it isn't particularly a good one either. In my opinion, the strongest element in this game is without a doubt the music composed by Peter Connolly, so I would have to put this game on my E tier list. And guess what? Metacritic also agrees with me scoring this game a 6.3 out of 10. Now the most controversial Tomb Raider game to date. Loved by many fans, but despised by even more. Angel of Darkness has in my opinion the best story, the best character model and probably the best main theme of any Tomb Raider game released to date. It has this dark and well-written story that if it was finished, 
would be up there as one of the best storytelling in video game history. However, the lack of polish to the controls, a camera that players end up fighting more than the in-game enemies, and some crazy amount of bugs and glitches made Angel of Darkness a mess to play. This game can be played on Steam or PlayStation 2, and it has a meta score of only 5.2 out of 10. I really love this game, and out of all of Lara Croft Adventures, this would be the best candidate for a remaster or a remake, but at this current state, I would have to put AOD on my C tier list. With Crystal Dynamics taking over the Tomb Raider franchise, 2006 Tomb Raider Legend was the true return that the series needed. With a brand new story and a redesigned look, Lara emerged as the hero once more with an entry that has a fluid and satisfying gameplay with challenging yet fun puzzles, a game that not only provides us with an interesting story of Lara's early days, but also with a compelling storyline that continue on 2008's Underworld game. Though some gameplay choices were not the best, Legend did break new ground in a different gaming generation, having a meta score of 8.2. It really comes down to preference, but in my opinion, the best way to play this game and also the next two is the LAU HD remaster for the PlayStation 3 or even the Steam versions of it. I placed Tomb Raider Legend on my A tier. Taking what they had done with Lara Croft in Legend, the developers choice to celebrate the 10 year of the franchise with a game that acts as a remake of the very original entry. Tomb Raider Anniversary is, in my opinion, a game that descended from the skies as a love letter to longtime fans. A game that takes the original levels and expands its scopes by improving the original puzzles, adding much needed platforms and creative traps. This is a game that I often recommend to first time players, and even though it has an 8.3 score in Metacritic, it's a 10 out of 10 game for me. Therefore, I have placed it alongside Tomb Raider 2 on my S tier. Tomb Raider Underworld is one of the best looking Tomb Raider games with incredible sights that represents the pinnacle of second phase Lara. In a post uncharted world, it was clear that this game and its new puzzling and platforming skills had learned a lot from the Nathan Drake series. Naturally, the game was not considered perfect, the combat system felt a bit dated, the story was surprisingly short, and most like AOD, Underworld could not quite get a proper grasp of the camera. Still, this is a fun adventure game that nails the franchise's trademark exploration and platforming while keeping it beautiful. It has a meta score of 8 out of 10 and I place Underworld on my B tier. Developer Crystal Dynamics opted to reboot the franchise again and this time it took a grittier approach to Lara Croft in order to tell a compelling origin story. 2013's Tomb Raider, more realistic puzzles and great third-person shooter gameplay proved to be just what the franchise needed at the time, and fans were quick to fall in love with the game, making Tomb Raider 2013 the best-selling game on the franchise. It has a decent 8.7 score in Metacritic, but in my opinion, the lack of confidence in Lara and her constant crying really made me look at this game as a complete separate action-adventure series other than a Tomb Raider game. Plus, there were no mandatory tombs, so even though I enjoyed it, I feel that this game deserves to be on my C list. Rise of the Tomb Raider takes everything that the first game did well and amplifies it, creating a perfect sequel to the 2013 game. Lara's character was explored deeper than ever, the graphics were top notch at the time, and the tombs were great and very challenging. My only problem here is that this game focused heavily on combat. There is too many explosions and gunfire, and combat is still as boring as in the previous game. With new survival mechanics, more crafting and possibly the most ambitious story of the series, Rise of the Tomb Raider is often considered the best modern Tomb Raider game by new fans, and it has a meta score of 8.8. .8. You can play this game on the Xbox One, PS4 and PC, and I place Rise on the B tier. And last but not least, Shadow of the Tomb Raider takes Lara back to a more visually appealing jungle setting, which I absolutely love. It also retains the gameplay that made the previous two games great, however this entry focused more on exploration and platforming 
rather than the packed action settings shown on the previous games. Shadow of the Tomb Raider also includes some great underwater sections and perhaps the best DLCs in the Tomb Raider franchise. Despite its disappointing and predicting story, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a solid experience in its own right and I dare to say that it's my favorite game on the Survival Trilogy. It has a meta score of 8.2 and it's placed on 3rd place on my B tier just after Tomb Raider 3. But this is only my opinion on how I would rank the mainline Tomb Raider games. And with that being said Raiders, I want to hear from you. Let me know your tier list in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, stay safe and until our next adventure.